This week in the shop, I get to spend lots of time here in my office designing new products. Before I get into these new products that I'm working on, I wanted to say thank you to everybody that pre-ordered our 20 valve valve covers. We are now gonna be ordering the material this week and we should get started machining on them in the next two weeks. I'll keep you guys updated on the progress. As you guys saw, last week I did some testing with our 20 valve valve cover and I had to machine an oil catch can so that I could check and make sure all the baffling in the valve cover was working correctly. To my surprise, there was a lot of interest in this oil catch can from you guys. I've had the idea of machining an oil catch can for a very long time for an A86, but I wasn't quite sure exactly what that was gonna look like as far as some people wanna put it above the engine because the breathers from the valve covers come straight up. You could put some sort of setup up against a firewall, but I wasn't super happy with that because there's not a lot of space there. What I decided to do with the prototype catch can was just put it where the overflow bottle was because it's a very simple, easy mounting location. And in that location, it's very easy to run a hose to. There was gonna be no issues with routing hoses, especially because I didn't have the car here to make sure that it fit correctly. So this prototype catch can that I made is a very simple design. It's just the breather filter attaches to the top, an AN hose that connects to your valve cover, I forgot to show you guys in the other video, but the inside of this is filled with stainless steel. I'm gonna add a picture of that right now for you. And it's two levels. So there's an upper level here and a lower level here. The reason that it's made out of two levels is because I wanted oil to have a place to get trapped so that it could be drained from. So the breeder line would connect to the top of the can and it would filter oil down to the bottom of the can where it would collect as a reservoir. Any oil that got stuck up in this area would have a chance to drain back down into this area, and hopefully that would prevent some of the oil from coming out the top of the filter. That was the idea, at least. So overall, this actually worked really well. But the biggest problem with this catch can design is that since it goes in the overflow bottle position, you would have to relocate your overflow bottle. Now, for some people, not really a big deal. For me, I already relocated my overflow bottle, so that space was already open. However, there are gonna be quite a few applications where people do not wanna relocate their overflow bottle. One, because maybe they just don't have another place to put it, or two, maybe they just like that position. So what I did was I came up with a concept of an overflow bottle and an oil catch can together. And both of them were designed specifically to fit up against the strut tower in the A86 and will probably also work in other chassis that have a similar design assuming that we can create the mounting solution that's kind of universal and I can just make different mounting brackets for it. Let me show you the first design that I came up with. The first design that I came up with is a very simple two-part design. This is the oil catch can on this portion here and this is the overflow bottle on this portion here. I included a cap on the top for the overflow bottle and this is the same size breather fitting as we had on our original oil catch can. I also added the overflow feed line. This is what would come from the radiator to the bottom of the overflow bottle. And then on the right side of the catch can, I have a dash 10 ORB and a drain fitting. For a concept and an initial 3D print, this is actually a pretty good design and a good starting point. When I first designed this, I thought I need to optimize all of the different material sections to keep the cost down as low as possible. I didn't wanna machine away a lot of material because that ends up raising the price of the product. So the way that I designed this, I designed this with a single piece top plate. And the reason that I did a top plate like that was to incorporate the breather fitting into the piece of material used for this top plate. The idea there was that I would be machining this part away anyway, and so I might as well incorporate that fitting into it. The problem that that created was the plane at the bottom of this would have to seal with all three of these lower portions. Now it's not super difficult for me to key all of these parts together and align it correctly, but it would require an O-ring seal or some type of a seal between this top plate and the catch can since it's two different pieces. Not the best idea. Another problem that I found with this original design that I've made some changes into the revision was that I think the capacity for the overflow bottle was a little bit too small and alternatively, I think that many people are gonna want more than one breather fitting on the catch can. It's pretty common to have two breather fittings from the valve cover, whether they're dash 10 or not, not really relevant, but some people will have a dash eight or they'll have a half inch hose, rubber hose with a hose barb fitting. So the redesign is gonna have two AN fittings incorporated onto the front. 
When you add a second fitting to the catch can, you're adding more air through the catch can. So you need to have more ventilation at the top of the catch can. So what I'm going to do, instead of this single three quarter inch hose barb fitting, I'm gonna change that to a single one inch hose barb fitting. Now I'll show you on the revised 3D print, all of the changes that I've made, but the one change I didn't change on that revised 3D print is I didn't incorporate the one inch breather simply because I don't have a one inch breather filter here to test yet. I did order one, it'll probably be here in the next couple of days. So let's take a look at the revised 3D print. So here's the revised version. First thing you'll notice, quite a bit bigger. What I did was I added an inch to the whole width of the catch can combo. You can see here, the original one is about an inch thinner. I also, change the bottom profile shape of this catch can to better fit into the wheel well of the A86. That also gives me a little bit of added capacity on this backside here. Another thing that I do to try to reduce some of the cost and ease of machining, while this tank is very tall, it's difficult to machine down this deep into a part. So instead I split the can somewhat in the middle. What this is gonna do is it's gonna allow me to be able to machine out the insides of both of these parts a lot quicker reducing the cycle time, reducing the cost. We have our overflow cap on top. What I'm gonna do for this is I'm just gonna have a small hole drilled in the top of it for ventilation. The ventilation is really just to allow the fluid in and out without causing any pressure inside. If at some point you are overheating your engine and your radiator is boiling over and this catch can is filling up to full, then what will happen is the coolant will just come out the top of that cap right there. And in the same effect, just spill out in the engine bay, the same as if you had an overflow tube or something like the factory one. Moving over to the catch can side of it, you can see it now has two AN fittings onto it. You can plug one if you're only using one, or you can use both of them connected to the engine. Up on top, this is still that three quarter inch breather fitting. I am going to upgrade that to the one inch fitting. You can see the drain fitting on the bottom here. There was some people in the comments were saying I should put it on the bottom of the can. Now let me explain to you why, while that will help for getting all of the oil out, it actually is not as user friendly. So you can see here with the can mounted in the engine bay, when you try to stick something underneath the can to drain it, it's very difficult to fit a cup or something to catch the oil underneath there. The reason that I'm putting the drain fitting on the right side is because next to the oil filter, there's some room that you can just use a plastic cup or something to drain into to drain the oil catch can. Another thing as well is that this drain fitting could be pulled out and you could use this as a drain back into your engine's oil pan. So with the eighth pipe fitting, you could just use a hose barb and a rubber hose and connect it back to your oil pan. So this could be a system that does not need to be drained. It would just continuously drain itself back into the engine while allowing all of the fumes out the breather filter. I'm pretty happy with the rough shape of all of this. The overall size of the overflow, the size of the catch can, again, this will be filled with stainless steel mesh inside to reduce the amount of oil coming out of the breather filter. The next problem that we have to address is how do we mount this into the car in a somewhat universal fashion? While it's great that I make A86 specific products, it doesn't serve all of our customers. Not all of our customers have A86s. Some of them have other chassis that are similar in layout. So I think it's going to best serve everybody if I can come in and create a mounting solution that while fits perfectly into an A86 can also be adapted into other chassis, let's say S chassis, older Corollas, you get the idea. So right now, I haven't figured out any of the mounting on this. All I did for mock-up pictures, I just drilled a couple holes in the back in the original mounting hole location on the A86 and screwed it in there for pictures and fitment. That's not a good solution. I'm not sure if I'm gonna make mounting on the back of this yet, or if I'm going to drill and tap some holes on the top of it or on the bottom of it that I can that I can make a bracket that bolts into the car and then you just bolt the can onto that bracket. That's probably the simplest solution for everybody. But that's something I'm gonna be working on a little bit later this week. Another new product that I'm gonna be working on this week, probably have machined early next week, is a 20 valve distributor plug. So this is very similar to our 16 valve distributor plug. It's just going to be a single billet unit. It's gonna incorporate an O-ring just like the factory distributor and just mounts on the back of the engine like so. Not revolutionary, but it might be helpful for some of you guys that aren't using a factory distributor anymore. Like let's say you have 
the distributor relocated to the front, or you're using a crank trigger setup, something like that, and you no longer need a distributor that's doing nothing in the back of your engine, now you'll have a solution. You can plug it up pretty easy. Another new product that I'm working on this week is window cranks. I've had a lot of requests for these over the years, mainly because the plastic splines on the inside of the factory plastic window crank strip out over time. A lot of this has to do with the window tracks in older cars becoming sticky, and it requires more force to roll the window up and down, causing these things to wear out and break and strip, etc. So I'm not really trying to reinvent the wheel with a window crank. I would like to come up with a solution that fits the car, doesn't look out of place, doesn't look like some gaudy billet thing up against a standard interior door panel. Machining billet parts for interiors of cars is always tricky because while in the engine bay, you kind of want things flashy and standing out and looking cool, on the inside of the car, keeping things as subtle as possible is always best. So the first part of any design is just figuring out the original geometry of the factory part figuring out the cutaways for the clips that hold it. And the most important and most difficult part to make on this is gonna be the spline on the inside that connects to the window crank on the door itself. Because the factory crank is made through the plastic injection molding process, they're able to create sharp teeth on the inside here. It's not that easy to do that on a CNC machine. The only type of tool that can cut those sharp corners would be what's called a brooch. And that's a process of scraping a shape through a length of a tool or through multiple different tools. And you can take a round corner and create a sharp corner. Now that that is one solution. What I could do is I could machine a bushing, have it sent out, have it broached, have those bushings pressed in here or hold them in here somehow. But I wanted to be able to keep it all in house. I also wanted to keep it simple, less pieces, less problems. Let me show you from a design side what I'm going to try to do to create the spline on the inside of these window cranks. So here's the initial shape of the window crank itself. Let me go into the geometry of the spline area so you can see what I'm talking about. Because in the CNC mill, all of the tools that are used to create all of the shapes that you see are round spinning tools, none of them can create a sharp internal corner. What I'm having to do is use a tiny 1 16th end mill to cut away the material deep down inside of this handle so that I can create little teeth that are gonna engage with the spline on the door itself. I'm probably gonna to have to mess around with this quite a bit to get the fitment perfect. The biggest reason being that because I'm having to fit a 16th diameter tool, which is just smaller than this circle right here, it makes these teeth kind of thin. And because these teeth are kind of thin, I need to make sure that they engage really well at the end of the teeth to make sure that the door handle is not wiggly when it's mounted. This initial concept will probably be refined a little bit. I'm thinking about pocketing the underside of it right here. This counter bore on the left right here is actually going to be for a ball bearing. Let me show you that here. I'm not quite sure exactly how I'm going to hold it in just yet. I like the idea of pressing it or using some sort of bearing adhering compound but I'm probably gonna to wanna to look into coming up with some sort of solution like a snap ring that can hold this in place as well. That would make sure that there's no chance of it coming out. The other part of the door handle is the actual knob itself. This is a pretty simple piece, and this is going to protrude through the bearing. This is going to be just below the top surface of the bearing so that I can use hardware that screws into the knob that's going to hold the knob to the bearing so that it can rotate freely. Here's what that looks like with the bearing pressed in, the hardware holding the knob to the bearing. Obviously wanna have a little bit of clearance here, but once this is all snug down, even this 3D print is pretty rigid. So I like the way this feels, it's really smooth. You can kind of see the spline and the cutaway for the clip. One problem that I ran into when 3D printing this is that I'm unable to create an actually sharp corner on the inside of that spline because I'm restricted by the nozzle size on the 3D printer, it's always gonna have a radius the same size as the hole in the end of the nozzle. So this is gonna get me pretty close for the fitment on the car, but I'm probably gonna have to do final adjustment to that slip-on size once I start machining the aluminum pieces. So I'm gonna get the material order to make some of these and I'll probably have one of these knocked out by the end of the week. So while I wait for my one-inch breather filter to show up for my catch can, 
I'm gonna continue to work on these window cranks. Got lots of programming to do. Maybe I'll put a little bit of that here in the end of this video so you guys can see the process. And I really wanna get one of these prototypes done by the end of the week. If it goes super smoothly, I might even actually release these before the end of this week. This video is being filmed much earlier than you guys are seeing it. Anyway, see you guys next week.